make sure we can jump on it, um, but you know what else is going on in town. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the thing that's going through my mind yeah. the most, is how that goes. Being able to manage that along with everything else. Yeah. Um, and, and we could probably provide those numbers to you. Okay. you know, we've, uh, got, we've got a lot of data in the area of the similar size bridges, so we can, we can get to some, some ballpark figures in that. But we'll have to go through an RFP process to find the need to get an engineer. And, yeah, you should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you would follow, because um, um, it's a town-owned structure, you follow the state guidelines of the state being transferred to the area. So the thing with the FLAP program is it doesn't come around, it's not an every year thing, so the rounds of funding come out sort of sporadically. Like the last one was two or three years ago. So if you pass, you know, if you say, oh, you know, it's too much, we can't take it on, we can't take it on right now, it might not come around again for a couple, three more years. Um, so just, just, you know, understand the situation you're in, but just want to put that out on the table. It's not like we'll be back here again next year with the same opportunity. Yeah. So that is crucial for Robert's project as well? It, it's, yeah, I mean, it's crucial to the Robinson project as well. Um, there, you know, there could be an alternative solution, temporary solution to truck haul wood, because it really becomes the contractor's responsibility at that point. We sell the wood, and then they have to figure out how to get it out. Um, it might it certainly affect the bid price for the wood, you know, because that would count against the, the receipts that we would get for the, the logs that would come off. So they would it's still your that into their bid. as well. So yeah.
means the, the um, north east side is for service. We need to clear it. We need to be sure, but that's what yeah. I think. I thought that was Grandy Avenue. I don't know, but it would be worth it. We'll it find worth out. Yeah, it would be yeah. worth the hassle to get the right yeah. away or acquire the land or whatever. Yeah. And I think on the right side of the bridge.
recess here until we reconvene the next next meeting in a little bit, and um, give us a chance to study the uh, study this since we're bringing this up. I mean, it makes sense that if we can uh, approve this, this would be the one to give um, guidance to the class. That one is the up to date. Right. It's, uh, it's just a draft. Yeah, I've actually had it for quite some time. Uh, 
on Brush Street, but they need to be answered by Joan and the Sheriff's Department. So, anyway, see you after. Going once? Going twice? <laughs> All right, you got it. Um, let's start off with uh, Mike Chamberlain and um, Claude. Claude that are here from the Windsor County Sheriff Department that we have been working on a contract to, um, uh, to hire them to provide, a, um, at this point, a, a couple of shifts to coverage in, in the town here. And we yes, sorry, Claude. I got Mike Chamberlain, but I didn't get the other gentleman. Claude, what's your last name? Claude, uh, W-E-Y-A-N-Y. And what's your first name? Claude. Claude, okay. I'm trying to talk loud enough that Martha can hear me over the fan. The thing is, the fan is really loud. Well, it's hard to hear with the other one. Why are you moving down there? Fan on, fan off. Well, it's, it's warm. I don't want to make anybody sweat. I just can't hear it. I'm trying to be considerate. So we've. Um, We've got a contract here that we've had reviewed by our, our town attorney and we've um, fine-tuned it and, and all parties um, agree it seems to represent um, both of our interests and, and we're excited to, to invite you guys into town to um, you know, give us some, some coverage and I guess um, does anyone have any questions or, or concerns? Or how quick can they start? How quick can they start? <laughs> well, 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 we'll just start on July 1. We were, I know. We, I know. We, we had asked if they could um, possibly have a shift around the 4th of July parade, which Terry had uh, expressed. It would be nice to have a little bit of traffic control around around that. And, um, and actually, uh, the parade starts at 11? 11. At 11. So is that a that was going to be the first question to That was going to be the first question. I'm Mike Chamberlain. I'm the sheriff for Windsor County. For those of you that may not know me, I kind of grew up around this area, so I've known quite a few of the people who, quite a few of the people in the room, actually. So anyways, um, uh, under the, uh, we're scheduled to start July 1st, a week from today. Uh, one of the things that Dune had asked us would we be available and could we take one of our shifts to be here on the 4th of July? Yes, we will. Um, my question to you for the captain who does all the scheduling and everything for our department personnel is uh, what time would you like us here and who do we report to? Who would you want us to meet with and where do you want us to go? In terms of coordinating for the parade, I'd say uh, <laughs> Terry. 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 I'm working that shift that day, Sheriff. Sure. Okay, right. well then, right. there's a man to talk to, I guess, at the firehouse. At his firehouse, yeah. yeah. What time? Well, we're going to be there at 9, but we'll probably leave by 10 to go down and get ready. So if I'm not there, you can stop down by the cemetery and I'll be there. Okay. Terry, with, I'm, I'm the parade chairman. Do you... Uh, Terry was going to, Terry, and as I understand it, you've always done below town, and, and in the past, Mark Belisle did above town, so would that be what they'd be doing? Correct. The above town is the worst one. They, people really quite inconsiderate, that you know. So coming into the... Coming right, you'd park yeah. probably by the bank and stop them there. We'll give you a handout so you can be on our frequency. Okay. Okay, and then, then you know when we start. So I'm at, if I'm at the fire station at 9.30, that's good? Sure. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyways, uh, Claude will be here for, him. have you picked another day? day Actually, uh, Actually Monday. Monday, okay. Yeah, well, we're scheduled to be here Monday. Now, the thing, our schedule can change. This is a flex schedule that we have. Uh, Basically, what we try to do is when I hire people to come work for us, uh, to give them a full-time job, to be able to give them a salary, their full-time benefits and everything that they have. What we try to do is put together several towns, may work uh, Rochester for a four-hour shift here, then go back. If it works, it might go to Barnard, might go to Sharon, could get down to Cavendish, Plymouth, Bridgewater. Uh, Rochester will be our seventh town that we have in our schedule. So basically the way it works, we do 
try to piggyback with a town that's close by if it works. If it doesn't, it just doesn't, that's all. But that's the way that uh, we're structured and designed to try to put together uh, a workable uh, time frame. The, um, in talking with the board, uh, a couple of the main concerns that I understand of Rochester is one of them is the speeding problem on Brook Street and here in this area here yeah, in the main area I guess it's 30 it runs through town <coughs> and uh, the board has acted, asked us to kind of uh, concentrate mostly in these two areas uh, as much as possible we try to not uh, and I again not sure just how many what they call calls for service would be a call um, you know, somebody calls and says, hey, there's a bad domestic going on up at such and such a number on Brook Street. Yeah, we're going to respond. You know, we have to. Um, we don't want to because to pass it off to have the state police or somebody come in. Sometimes they're just so far away, it's hard for them to get, you know, to respond. And we're here already. Um, so we try to... Um, we, we try to pick and choose as much as we can, but again, all of you folks are taxpayers for the town of Rand, uh, for the town of Rochester. Whatever your complaint is, it, you know, it might be minor, uh, a minor complaint, but it's important to you. Some of the other people say, well, I don't know why you're wasting your time doing that. We, we get all sorts of calls, calls to do VIN verification. Marvin, Mike calling, you know, say, Mike, when's the next step at the end? Oh, golly, he's coming around. Could he stop by my place? I, I just bought a, I got a vehicle. I need to get it registered. You know, we want to do that. That's, that's part of what we do. Um, but here, we're here to try to provide the best level of service, law enforcement services we can to the town of Rochester. We're not going to be here a lot. We're here twice a week to start off with. Uh, basically see how the budget goes and uh, what Rochester has for funds and at some point, maybe another year, you might consider to add another shift. What you're trying to do, I think, is uh, they're trying to figure out are we the best agency to provide the level of service for the time being. Maybe, and, you know, and, and I can tell you that, um, you know, policing is going to be more and more difficult as we go on because of the need. Little, small towns have to have some sort of service. State police love it when we go into some of these small towns because a lot of times they're just spread so thin, they got 22 towns to take care of in their patrol district. And that runs, I think, all the way from Brookfield down to Plymouth, Reading, and across that area. So they got a, they got a big area. So again, what we try to do is we try to work with each other as, as much as we can. If I need them or my officers need them, they'll call, they'll respond for backup. They would expect the same from us. So main thing is we don't want anybody getting hurt. I don't want the taxpayers to get hurt. I don't want my people getting hurt. So again, we're always trying to look to see how to protect each other. Yes, sir. So you'd be here two days in a week? Uh, we'll be here twice a week, four hours each time. But, but you're not responding simply to speeding. You would be responding, for example, as you said, to domestic violence or... In any sort of call. Whatever the call is, if it's a domestic violence, um, you know, the thing is, if somebody got broken into... Yeah. Uh, all right, here's a good example. I don't know. You left for a couple of days, you come home, you found your woodshed been broken into, had a brand new power saw in there. Uh, we, we can take that. But again, do you folks want us spending that time? To you it's important, but sometimes people say, well, that's something that happened two weeks ago, you know, maybe you should call the state police. My feeling is, if we're here, let us go ahead and, and try to do the best we can with it. We'll take the initial call, um, the call for service, and you know, we can only do the best we can. You know, because you can put a lot of time, effort, and expense in doing, taking calls for service, and then it's the follow-up. And again, we're not here 24-7, so right. we're what limited. What you're saying is, is, you know, in general, if there is an emergency, you still call 
on 911 calling the state police. You know, we're not just because we have this arrangement with the sheriff, right? Do a couple of shifts here. That doesn't mean that you take the responsibility. Yeah. For the and the only way we're probably going to know is for you to call 911. State police will take a look at it. Hey, we got a bad domestic going on up the street. We got a bad accident down on a, a south of the village. Uh, what happened? So you would be in place of a constable? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's my understanding that there is no more constable system, right? There, constable. Well, we'll still have a constable in title. We're required to have a, a constable, okay. but not a, a law enforcement trained constable. And again, we only cover while we're here. <laughs> We're not replacing anything that the state police do or have done in the past. If we're not here, then you'll want to call the state police because they're going they're the ones that are going to have to respond anyways. All we're doing is trying to supplement, fill the gap to get us to come in and maybe hit some of the areas that's not easy uh, for the state police to do. And to, to have a presence here to keep right. things from going a little, little Absolutely. Yeah. And that's important today. You know, the, the deterrent effect and just visibility will be of great value to you folks here in Boston. When they, cause, and the nice thing is, as I uh, spoke with the board, you know, you could have us come once, once a week for four hours, but people trying to get to know, oh, sheriffs are in town today. Today's Monday. Oh, we won't see them again. <laughs> But they see us today, they're not sure when's the next day they're going to be back. Yeah, um, looking, uh, talking about, somebody mentioned about speeding up on Brook Street. Mm -hmm. I just took a quick look up there. Unbelievable. But, uh, it seems like a lot of people have concerns. Um, I noticed tonight, uh, I just took a quick ride up because I know that was going to be one of the subjects of the topic tonight, was uh, speeding on Brook Street. How far up is a, is a problem go a long ways up? I rode up and I, and I see these little tags on your speed limit signs. How did those tags get there? Pardon, the town put them on? Okay, did you do it in compliance with the rules and regulations? No, the, okay. the posted speed limit, I mean, the, the, the official speed limit is still 30. Still put those up there just to try and slow okay. things down. Because if anything's been de defaced in any way, I, I can tell you right now, if somebody knows about that, they're going to challenge that ticket. All I'm doing is wasting the town's time and money to go and this gentleman here, I stopped him or Bob did, whoever, he's doing... I don't know, it's now saying 20, it's normally what, 25? 30. 30. 30. 30, 30, 30, 30 on the bottom, 35 okay. on the bottom. But anyways, the whatever, the, it, it could be a good speed, could be going 40, 45 up through there, or coming down yeah, through. They do. But if somebody looks and you have not changed your ordinances in any way, then that puts us in, that puts us doing something that I don't want to do because we're issuing a ticket to somebody, to you, like one of you or anybody here or somebody outside. We want to be right up front, be honest about it, and we want to make sure when we're spending the town's nickel going to court, we don't want to go and then have the guy raise, you know, makes an objection before the judge, and the judge says, you can't do that, tell the dogs, it's gone. I, I've spent time and money from you folks. So, again, please just a word to the wise, take a look at your ordinances and make sure, um, and I'll need a copy of those, by, by the way, at some point for anything that's under the ordinance where, because again, I want to write the ticket for you folks because you generate some of that income coming back to the town. Why do we want to give it to the state of Vermont, right? Town will like get some of that revenue back and the way the fines and everything are set up, normally the town gets a pretty good portion of that. Not to make, uh, you know, we're well known, I guess, on the national website for Bridgewater. Bridgewater's had problems there for years. And it, it's, you know, it's, it, it, you folks know what I'm talking about. But we're hired specifically to come in and just do primarily street enforcement. We really don't want us doing much of anything else. Again, something life-threatening, yeah, respond. But everything else, we let another agency handle that. 
So anyways, we're well known to, and anybody going through Bridgewater, if they don't know enough to slow down by now, they, and, 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 and a lot of, lot of times people forget. That's, that's not hard to do. I even have to be careful myself because I don't want to be embarrassed by the clock pulling me over uh, because I wasn't paying attention. So anyways, uh, gentlemen in the back row. So the 25 mile an hour is not enforceable? The 25 is not enforceable? Yes. That's a question. I, I'm sorry. That's a question. Is the 25 mile an hour speed limit posted on the street now not enforceable? What street are we talking about? Street? Street? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, absolutely. As long as there's an ordinance to back but it up. There's not there's an ordinance to back that up. No, the ordinance okay. now says there's 35 on the, on the back roads. Okay, the we, sign itself? The sign itself is saying 25. Okay. Again, if you're going to make any changes and to do it, make sure it's legal so we're not wasting time. You know, just get a change in your ordinance. So if you if you clock someone going 50 miles an hour down Brook Street and they're going well over the, um, the 35 posted, is that, is that, is that ticketable? Is that, will that hold up if the sign says 25? If the sign's been altered yep. in any way, yep. and he takes a picture and shows it to the judge, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe Clark can help me. But, but those signs I, coming I, down are not altered. Those are 25 that the guys, those are real 25 signs. Yeah. But the board but might have the ordinance. I know, they haven't been altered. Yet. So what he's saying, they are altered because that hasn't been to tell what's underneath it <laughs> because it looks like they've taken a plate and uh, what do you want to say? Right, it's not what a whole lot of screaming residents. So the, oh, I know. The ordinance right now oh. is from the bottom of Brook Street up to Clingens, and that's where it hit the dirt road at 40 right. miles an hour posted, and then it was 35 from there up. To the mine. To the mine. You know, I'll be glad to check with, uh, with, with the court and with the uh, traffic here on by you know, sometimes things are a lot better not said, but again, you know, not discussed, but again, if you're looking to make, what we want to make sure I don't get in trouble in the town of Rochester yeah. doesn't get in trouble. Yeah. And because the thing is, anybody here from the press? Anybody? Right. Oh, all right. Well, the Herald and Randolph. Okay, yeah. great. But anyways. Um, and and, and uh, what can you do? It is what it is. Yeah. So uh, all I'm saying is we just want to make sure we're doing the right thing, you know, for, for everybody's sake. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure the board wants to do the same thing. If we're going to if we're going to spend time in these areas, we want to be able to write a ticket and know it's a good ticket. Right. That nobody's going to tear that apart in front of court because. I can tell you, I've, I've been doing this for about 50 years. People will go take a picture of that, and regardless whether it's somebody that lives right here all the time in Rochester, or just somebody passing through, could be somebody from way out of state. Um, they've come in with pictures and witnesses, and so you know where I'm going with this. Bob okay. had something you wanted to speak to. So the speed bumps, you know that, uh, you're getting into an area that, that I uh, usually, uh, we don't have that in there, do we? We don't have that Okay, so what about, are they illegal? Is there a speed limit for the speed bumps? Do you have a speed bump in a 30 mile an hour zone? I'm not sure, well, to be honest with you. Asking? Yep. Ask that one too. Oh, I will. Okay, yeah. Because um, what, what, what you're asking is, is it legal to have speed bumps in the speed zone? Is that with, right? With the speed yeah, the as high speed as it is. Sure. If it was a 30 mile speed bump, it should be maybe in 15 or 20 miles or something. A speed bump in 30 miles or something. Yeah. And again, you know. You're probably getting almost to an area where you should be probably talking to your town attorney because, and, and I hate to say this, but you're looking at liability issues. Right. Because if you cause somebody to have an accident now, you, you know, because you, you folks had them put there by somebody. So my suggestion would be is to at 
least with that one, check with the, you know, the, 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 the uh, as far as the other one, you know, I, I don't have a problem talking with the court and seeing, you know, how they feel about what's been done. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure they're going to agree with that. Uh, let's try I'll this. tell you why that was being done. Okay. Because the traffic was unreal. They're flying down the hill. Yep. There's more traffic than there ever was. The kids were getting out of school, and we were all bitching. I mean, it's not, I'm the first one on the dirt road. Right. Bruce is the last one on the dirt road. And Dave Perry's in the middle. And I can tell you, they are flying when they go by my house and by the time they get up to Bruce's. Is this something that's, is this pattern changed over the years? Oh, it's it changed recently? over the last two months. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Is it because of the Bethel Mountain Road? Yeah. When yeah. the Bethel Mountain Road's repaired and it's back to normal, it you won't have that. Right. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. It's because that's the only way. And then up. maybe the tractor trailer that came, the 53 footer that came down through on Wednesday noon will go the other way and not come down Brook Street and meet the oil truck <laughs> okay. on the corner. Yeah. Well, we can take so care of some of, of that. Situations. The 53 footers, probably they're not allowed up they're there, right? No, they're not anyway. Okay, they're, you don't. Because they got to have a permit to get through, anyways. They cannot go through Woodstock unless they got a permit, uh, and some of the other places. But anyways, uh, but the 53 footers, that that guy should know better. I expect yeah. what probably happened is GPS yeah. put him on track, yes. and he didn't know enough to try to turn around or find a play, so he kicked in the worst it got. You know, I don't know how he made the corner up like Dirk Patrick. That, that's kind of scary in a way. You know? Bruce, because again, we're, we're here for the safety of you folks. You know, I think just the presence. Pardon? I think just the presence. Well, you know, yes, well, present, but yeah. also yeah. it's probably going to take a couple violations, somebody getting tickets, and it usually always happens where it's a taxpayer, and then, you know, this room will probably be packed at some point, you know. <laughs> What'd you do? Do you get the sheriffs in here? And, you know, all we're doing is getting tickets, so. But again, they know what the safety concerns are, and they probably know what the, what the speed limits are. I'm sure they do. I mean, this is not, I guess this is not terribly to me, but when we have that constable, you're a sheriff and then another state police. I don't understand the sheriffs. What do they do? What's our role? Yeah. We do a little bit of everything. We serve the process. We provide the prisoner transportation. Uh, we provide officers to the courts. We provide contract services like what we do here. Yeah. See, we're not funded by the county. They're okay. elected. I'm elected by the county. Yeah. I'm the sheriff of Windsor County, but there's no funds that come with it from the county. Uh -huh. Not one penny for law enforcement services. Yeah. Okay? So anything that we get is done through a contractual basis. Yeah. That's how you see the sheriff's cars. Yeah. There's not a line item budget from the county yeah. to buy yeah. that cruiser, the equipment in it, yeah. the deputy's uniform he's wearing, yeah. or uh, any of his equipment are all bought through what we do. Basically, our legislator have made the sheriffs a business. We're just like all of you folks who have your own business going on. And that's how we survive. Without the contracts, I'd have to put hang the shingles they've gone out of business. So you're like an entrepreneur in some they, Yes, we are. Oh. We really are. Because we don't have a budget, per se, uh, because there is nothing from the county. What I hope is that we have enough contracts to keep be able to pay the, the deputies um, and their salary and benefits, pay for those crew, and then just keep kind of keep saving. They're like a building contract, construction going. Hopefully you get enough road jobs and you sell enough or you build enough houses this year to carry over if next year's a bad year. So it's always trying to look forward. And that's how we survived. Well, I'm glad our select board knew to contact you. I'm sorry? I'm glad our select board knew to contact you to oh. provide services for us. You're glad they are? Yeah, sure. yeah I am too. Uh, because, again, we want to, you know, we want, like I said, we want to try to provide the best service we can to the people of Rochester um, and be able to survive at it too. Yeah. Bruce, policing. Question in the back there? Yeah. Yeah. 
if we, if we don't change the ordinance to match the speed limit, they're not going to have any teeth. Well, let me check on that first. First call I'll make tomorrow is I will check on that and then I'll get back to Doon. And then Doon, I expect, will check with their attorney as to about the speed bump because I don't think that that's something, um, and I know the court's not going to respond to that unless somebody brings it before the court. But I, I would say that the most important part of that is liability putting speed bumps up and are there warning signs speed yes. bumps ahead yes, and, yeah. and and then you have speed limit so and so yes all so over the place. they could go what 20 25 over yeah. speed because usually speed bumps they just almost throw you right off the road if you're not there well, yeah. 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 and other signs is motorcycles use caution yeah, I know. It, it, that, that's a tough area there. You know, I can understand all your folks here. And this is um, this is all come to a head because of Bethel Mountain Road being under construction. You know, you know, probably through the rest of the summer and into the fall. So it's you know, all so, will yeah. evolve. You know, um, what? You probably don't have enough time to change your ordinance in any way. And the other thing is, is it allowable through statute to, it's normally what, 30, 35 going up Brook Street? 30, 30 on the bottom, 30 bottom 30 35, 35 up the hill. Okay, so 30 on the bottom, and now they've got it at what, 20? 20. Yeah. At 20, okay. Because again, it all depends on where you originally started the speed and how far you came down with it. Because there's a certain regulations you have to comply with, yeah, with this, even with the state of the Now, we knew that this was not, um, you know, according to ordinance right. to change it. This was basically just to try and to get some things down. To pass them through. Yeah. yeah, to get, get some people yeah. to slow down. Yeah. And it's not working. That's not working. really. Okay, well. Not on the dirt burn. Yeah, I believe the regional planning is the only one that can do a speed study and then establish a new speed limit. Okay. The town can accept as an order. Okay. All right. You now probably know more about that than I would because we don't get into that part of it. But again, it, it might not take a hurt. Uh, might not hurt. Take a look at that just to see, and it might be a quick, easy way to get an ordinance put in place to get that down to 20. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, this is my personal opinion is that I would like the ordinance put in place and stay there. Yeah. I'm not. I would like to do the effort to make the ordinance because I don't want this to jump back up to the speeds that were on the right. street. But that's my preference. But yeah. If you're going to go to the trouble of making the ordinance, means you're going to have to unordinate. Right, yeah. at some point, I just shouldn't have when Mount Road gets fixed, oh, sure. yeah. well, that's or something so. you folks are going to have yeah. to do. Yeah. So, um, any other questions for the Sheriff at this time? Yeah, I know you probably got a lot on your plate tonight, so I don't want to take any more time necessary, but it, it is at least a pleasure to come and talk to you. Yeah, well, thank you for taking the time to come and do this, but I would, I would like to make a motion to, to sign this contract and right. bring them on. Yeah, check it out. All in favor? Need to move, right? All right. And you'd probably want a copy of this, right? Uh, yeah, if you could yeah. sign it tonight and make yeah, yourself a copy, yeah, then, make uh, a copy yeah. and I'll take the... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, get, yeah, get it signed before you leave. Right? <laughs> well, no, it's just that we're getting close, and by statute, we have to have an ordinance in place. <laughs> and I agree, just your presence there might make a difference, because last week, there was a DMV police officer that sat in the... Uh, driveway at the cottage which is below our house yep. and 12 motorcycles came barreling down the hill until they saw him and then they pulled over and stopped and had a little chat with him he didn't stop anybody else because he was looking for the trucks coming down of course the right. truck came down at that point but yep. uh, just just him being there people were going slower yep. and 
you know, at some point, once we get an understanding of, uh, you know, that particular area, all it's going to take is a couple tickets. Word is going to get around yeah. really fast, and when they see a sheriff sitting there, they're going to say, you know, that's going to send up a red flag. Oh, gee, my friend John, Johnny just got a ticket for here, but not really careful. Uh, I, I happen to live on Main Street with 100, yeah. so I'm wondering, would any of your time be spent at all on I just happen to see a lot of people speeding through the village where the speed limit is 30. And what whereabouts on 100 do you live? Right? I live right in the village. You know where Park House is? Yeah. Uh, the elder housing I live across the street. So We're hoping to take a look at this whole section too. Okay. You know, and again, and, and you know, this is no secret, but I, I can tell you, we we do not write a ticket unless it's at least 10 over the posted speed limit. Right. That is just to give everybody just being try to be fair. Um, and again, people start contesting them. Then it goes to the state attorney's office. State attorney's office doesn't want to try to tie up a lot of time for something that's going 10. And again, we let me ask your opinion. Do you think that's reasonable? Sure. Yeah. The speed limit says 25, and we don't write them until 36. That's fine. They, they get caught at 36, 37. Well, I get them two books. But we're not going to write somebody at 29. Pardon? You're going to fill them up for you. Yeah, that trust me. Book. <laughs> no. So, there you go. There's your copy, and we got one here. Okay. Is this the original? That's the original. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Good. 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 Yeah, and again, uh, we don't want to come in and just start just, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to set a bad example in any way for either us or the, uh, the town. We, we want to try to come in and try to do a good job. And, uh, you know, come up with a couple of possibilities, just even for, you know, the square area here, talking to the board, just to be visible, let people know we're around, and I, and I think hopefully that'll help. But the car will be identified with the county sheriff. It'll look just like that cruiser right behind you, Al. You look right out that window. I'm sorry, I haven't been arrested by you yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're all marked on us. You got my number. Same here. If you folks have a question, you know, call me. You know, I'll be glad. If I if I can't answer, I'll try to direct you in the, to somebody that can. So, and if you forget who I am and where I'm at, Marvin, Barb, you folks, they all know. They all know me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And again, probably in about a month. Figured we'd give it a month and then maybe come back for a quick review. Just yeah. does that seem reasonable? Uh, so we'll see you. Somebody will see somebody. Yeah, we'll see you around. Yeah. Good Thanks again. Thanks. All right, so I kind of jumped them ahead on the agenda since they had uh, traveled here to be here. But uh, moving uh, back oh, to. No. to the, the, the minutes, and Mason, you had something, the comment you wanted to make about the minutes? Sure. Um, Mason Wade, taxpayer in town, and uh, under the missing books of uh, min uh, the unapproved minutes, uh, it ends with, uh, without the conversation that I had with the board, of which I felt that the board did make a pretty serious statement of how it wants to continue with the missing books. It's kind of, sorry that Michael left already because you have the opportunity to also share with him. We don't know, so maybe they're stolen, and so maybe it should be reported. Uh, so I, I feel it's uh, incomplete. Here, it's okay, we don't have to, I'm just sharing my thoughts about the improvements. And, um, also under the missing books, if we go back to 
August 28th, 2017. Uh, if, and you can pull it up on a screen, but we don't have one right here. Uh, the second sentence makes reference to the chair seeing the records of 1938. So in this minutes that you're getting ready to approve, you, you've changed, that's op opposite. So maybe in these minutes you should announce that those minutes were incorrect and that you want to correct them before you approve these. Why is all this important? Uh, <clears throat> our minutes are a critical way for all of us to be able to understand our town governance. And uh, people come to the vault to find records. If it's going to turn out that we don't know where the records are, and there could be in the basement, I think we should be telling people who come to go into the vault that we also have records in the basement. Uh, we have to be transparent about what our situation is with this so that people understand it when they're coming into the vault to see these records. So I think it's really important to make a solid statement of where we're at today with these missing books. Yes, what I heard was we don't know where they are and if they magically appear then we find them. Well that is a statement that we should make public and it's not here. So thank you very much. Here, I'm 
important to say that we need to be transparent about just I the think, public announcement that I these records are missing. Minutes were made, were you? 19, no, I wasn't there when those minutes were made in 1970. I was in Chicago. But um, I, mean, I was. Um, records, records are the most yes. important documents we have for yes. our town. You have the right to come in here and look all you want. No, no, no. We know they're missing. Is that correct, Bruce? Oh, yeah. So, no, but he's done. She saw a book in the vault 
that stated in 1938 or 39 that it had been talked about, but nothing was done. So I'm just wondering, we don't have any records from 20 to 50. How did she see records that they must have disappeared now, it's said that she looked at it. I believe it is the book that we do have that, that is focused on roads. It's, it's, not not it's not select board minutes. It's the book about roads and actions that have been taken about roads. And that's the book that we, we have found and we do have. And I believe that's what she was referring to. Well, that's the piece of information that yeah. I asked for way back. We uh, gave that to you. We gave that to you. I'm just yeah. kind of curious. Yeah, we gave you a copy of that. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, you didn't give me a copy of the uh, minutes that you were referring to, but... No, it's not the book with the information. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw the book and I went yeah. through it and I didn't find anything that related to the subject of the handbook. Yeah. Um, so, can we move on? Open the minutes to... Are we... Um, Talk enough about Brook Street? Are you going to prove your minutes? We did. We did. Wait a moment. I want to see what Jones has to say about the mountain. Joan, would you like to give your presentation? Um, I'll just give you some updates on things. Um, Thank you. First, on FEMA, uh, there's going to be a briefing tomorrow, so they're getting the process underway. I'll be attending. Paperwork and do all the administrative. No, this is this is FEMA. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Cooter and I are starting to talk about you know how to you know, organize getting bids out um, for sites five through twenty-four. Those are the FEMA sites. Uh, we added two more today. As a matter of fact, can you speak a little louder, please? Uh, there's only as loud as I can talk. Okay. It's all the buttons that we need to, to hit, and then use that one over and over as many times as we need to uh, get the work done. Um, on Bethel Mountain Road, Federal Highway uh, funds um, submitted an application to VTrans today, uh, which they will hold until uh, Federal Highway Administration actually issues the proclamation saying that they approved uh, the project. Uh, which is expected to happen sometime any day now, but we don't know exactly when. But as soon as that happens, they'll be able to su uh, submit a requisition for a payment um, so that we can get, start getting progress payments on uh, our expenses so far and as the construction starts that as well. Um, and Chris Bump filled out the application, and you've heard some of these numbers already, but for and this is just an estimate based on what we know today. Um, oops, um, sorry.
not involved with this project at all, with either with the FEMA or the Federal Highway Projects. It's through VTRANS. The VTRANS is the avenue the state uses to work with the federal agency, in this case, Federal Highway. So VTRANS is not some mediating... They're advisors, they're enablers, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're guiding us through the whole process. Um, but they're, they're, they're guys, I'm still not understanding. They're, they're just advisory or? No, no they're the more than that. The, they're the highway departments, the, the districts that you see, the trucks, that's all b -trucks. Well, We don't deal directly, with towns, municipalities do not deal directly with federal agencies. It's the state agencies that do that. So everything that happens goes through b -trans. So b -trans is contacting FEMA? B no, b -trans is not working with FEMA, they're working with federal. FEMA project, projects are managed through a different state agency. Yeah. And, and Three Rivers, Rivers has one role? No. None, no, 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 neither of those. No, no, no official. No. Not in this no. That, that's why Joan is doing this and not me. Thank you. <laughs> you so so Joan, do you still have these four contractors lined up that are going to bid on this? Or? No, we had to withdraw that bid. It was a little premature, but we didn't know it at the time. We're still we're, we're still learning the process, especially with the Federal Highway Administration. And what we learned is that, first of all, that first, so that first bid uh, included a FEMA project as well as a couple projects related with the Upper Bethel Mountain Road. We're not allowed to do that. They have to be totally separate bidding processes. Um, and in addition, the scope up there on Upper Bethel Mountain Road is changing. At the time we did that, we also didn't know that the projects on Upper Bethel Mountain Road could be combined and would be funded by Federal Highway. But that's, we've been told that would be the case. So we just have to back up and do it again. It's a whole more complicated bidding process. But my that's question enough. is, are we going to be able to get a contract at this late date? I mean, they're all... Well, we sure hope so. We're certainly... Are you talking for lower Yeah, yeah, I'll find it. 
course, I'm getting lost in my own paperwork. Um, and then I'm working on the grant and aid for 2020. Uh, it's not clear which project we're going to do or whether actually we're going to have one because what we've talked about doing is Bingo Road, and it sounded like maybe Bingo is becoming a much bigger project than the grant and aid. It's a different area.
weaved in those signs and went down there and had to turn around and come back up. There was one oh, that the was one up the Jersey area the other night. Yeah, I was going to say, I had a record with Caron. Yeah, watch it. There's 10, 15 people a day who drive past the barriers here, go up to the barricade, turn around, drive back down. That's just in the short time. Yeah. So part of closed, didn't they understand? Exactly. Every part of closed. I don't care how many signs you put up there. Thank you.
Um, and I wouldn't mind running through the names that I have okay. uh, in case there's anyone that I might have missed or maybe um, did not have damage. But does it run in relate to watersheds? We're not talking about culverts. Uh, well, it's just the name of the program. It's an emergency watershed protection, protection program. Mm -hmm. Right. And what they do is is provide financial assistance to homeowners who have damage. By the, um, well, and to municipalities as well, but I think we're pretty well taken care of in other ways. So uh, on Route 100, I have Dean Mendel, uh, the DeSantis's. Mostly I don't know people's first names, so I'll just say their last names. Uh, Bushnell, uh, Sterling. Ethan Bowen, we know about because he had to get a stream permit. Mm -hmm. uh, and Curtis. Is there anyone else you can think of on the uh, And then on Maple Hill, we have Russell. Thank you. Uh, White, Billings, uh, McIntosh, McIntosh Coon, and Boyd. And then also Boyd on Wing Fondo. You know, we think Lloyd, too. We I have Lloyd. 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 Lloyd's on here twice. Um, Catherine Shankman. Oh, Shankman, yes, yeah. great. I'm sorry. That, um, she's on Bethel Mountain Road. Yeah. And there are... And I don't know if Dane Larry would be there, too. Dane Larry. 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 L-A-R-Y. Dane Larry. And what road is... That's Maple Hill. Maple Hill.
crowd in a row. So what about the absolute choice of putting in a cola? And I agree with this. Can you have a sign and where are you going to put it? That's going to be up to the contractors, man. I'm sick of putting up signs that nobody reads. When that goes up to the contractor, that's their problem. Okay. I got enough problems. You can't do that, you get sued. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. You want another jump in? Sure. Sure. Well, as as the Fourth of July comes around, my, the loyalty part of me kind of kicks in. But anyway, with the idea that uh, sitting on this side of the table, I have observed that our flags are not properly displayed behind you all. I used to sit there, and so forth. And uh, so I would like to uh, have the select board take action of arranging the flags as they are ordered to be by federal mandate, if you would. And, uh, and there are plenty of, of copies of, of this. Uh, because this is a download, anybody can get it, and uh, of where the American flag will be in a series of other flags. So and uh, the middle, but to the right. And you put, right. you've got to put yourself in the place of the flag. And looking behind you, would you see that it is not correct? And I believe that the one flag was added a few years ago. Is that right, Wall? Two, both flags were added, okay. And they left the American flag in the middle. At that time... Dunes don't take care of it huh? right now. Is that the action of the board? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the chairman did it, it must be the action. All in the same meeting, Mark. Thank you for um, bringing that. And Mark. All in the same meeting. Thank you, Joe. American flag is American flag. Yeah. What? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, thank you. We'll leave this for bone builders to take note of as well. Yeah, what? Yeah. The bone builder ladies. Sometimes yeah. they move yeah. other they people come in and move around. stuff around, but yeah. against the wall, they shouldn't have to move around too much. So we'll make sure it's safe, right? right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate and that. I thank you too. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Frank, you had uh, you're on the agenda here. The duties and responsibilities of the uh, road commissioner and also duties and responsibilities of the road foreman. Right. right. So I understand um, you got a copy of the duties. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just filled with admiration for Patty Harvey coming to my house even mm -hmm. with his two kids after watching, I don't know, okay, Toy Story that's 4 that's or that's 5 that's or yeah. forever. And she put it in my hand and said, here. Uh, so, and so in, in current us with that fact, I want to give you this. And I, I just want you to know that, that the state of Vermont is, is aware that the town highways need supervision and control, and it is given that, that supervision and control to the selectmen of the town. And then under, underneath that, there's the duties of the selectmen pertaining to the roads, all 22 of them. But, but, I, but, I, but I said to Patty, I'm, and this is about selectmen. This is about road commissioner. And then, uh, I, I don't know whether she pointed my attention to it, but, under 16, it says, unless the town elected votes otherwise, under the provisions of 17 VSA section 2646, the select board has the authority to appoint a road commissioner or remove him or her from office pursuant to 17 VSA section. The road commissioner elected or appointed shall have only the powers and authorities regarding highways granted to them by the selectmen. So uh, um, I, I don't know when the I don't know when the, the minutes were, but I gather the select board appointed you to be the road commissioner. Yes, we did. Right. Okay. Every year. And then and then um, the the road commissioner shall have only the powers and authority regarding highways granted to him by the selectmen. So am I to assume that everything that has to do with highways has been granted to you? Basically, but we do work as a board together. I'm basically as foreman. I'm I'm the figurehead and, and do more interaction with people. Yeah. But everyone is. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah. we don't. You know, no, but I was. Hierarchy. I mean, I appreciated Patty's handing this to me because yeah. I 
because I'm saying this is just too much for one person to be talking you know, about it. in charge of it. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm kind of wondering whether, but I mean, I mean I, but I was pleased that I mean, the, the state of Vermont does have duties for, for, the, for the road specific about that stuff. But honestly, we're really blessed to have a road foreman that is, is very capable. Yeah, of, I was going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because really, he's the, the guy on the ground that is in, in touch with the government. So, so, I mean, I, I know what this says, that it's, you know, it, it's giving you all these responsibilities, but they are diffused among the other board members. We make big decisions together. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, but but it's, not, it's not something that needs... You know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether, I mean, we have this town that's so diverse. There's, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about where I am, and it's, I don't know, Maple Hill, and then we have Hawk involved there, too, and then we have the town and stretching this way. Yeah. But, it, but it doesn't it doesn't need thinking about sectioning that off in some way, where, where, where somebody would have where one of the select board persons should, um, might have responsibility for it. No, Cooter doesn't want to have to answer to multiple people. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I was, I was pleased to see this and pleased that Patty took the effort to, you know, bring it to me. And she said also that uh, there, there, are, there are duties and responsibilities for the road for them too. And that you were going to be providing those to me? Yes, and we have that on our desk here. Um, we have a draft des description, yeah. Yeah. but we are... There is currently a draft. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, we're updating a lot of the uh, documents in this town concerning uh, personnel and personnel duties. So we have a we have a currently a draft and we're taking according to Cooter he has two exceptions. Yeah. So um, this is a draft you're welcome to this copy, but there are two exceptions that I will be changing yeah. for a Cooter yeah. request. So why don't you make the exceptions and then get them to do that? Okay. Thank you. Sure. But, uh, no, I understood that you were the point person. Job the descriptions yeah. are changing as technology yeah. comes in. Yeah. Providing this to me, Patty. But I'm also noticing that. Oh, how about that annual report due April 1st, starting in 2019? That the, what the state is asking the road commission and select board to provide is ever changing, also. Yes. So, yeah, thank well, you for that. That's why we have John Bay help us too. Yes.